Okay, so if you're like me, you have a bunch of old saws kicking around. Uh, some of these are sharp, some of them aren't. Yeah, nothing fancy really, just I had all these hanging on one hook, my pegboard, by the handles, and that was pretty annoying. So I think I have decided that it's time to build a saw till. There's lots of plans out there, look up saw till on YouTube and you'll find lots and lots of videos on how to make them and stuff like that. But this is just a general idea of how I'm going to make it. I think I'm going to make it probably about 15 wide, 15 wide, by 24 tall, by probably about say eight inches deep and it will go right there on the pegboard you know I'll move some stuff I'll make some room I gotta clean up but yeah and we'll make room for at least ten saws uh yeah I'm just kind of gonna kind of wing it I got this old dresser here that's been uh sitting outside for some time it's kind of junk uh yeah so don't get mad at me antique people for what I'm about to do to this dresser it's got some nice hardwood on it so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of wing it, cut some pieces. I don't know. I'll put a description of, maybe I'll even put a cut list in my description. That might be about as far as I go with making a plan. Um, yeah, let's get it started, I guess. So the saw is going to be comprised of uh, four main parts, three rails and two sides. For the three rails, I'm going to make um, three inches Why? That's an arbitrary number. I, have, I don't really know why I picked that. Next, we just mark and cut to length. I'm going to cut these two. What am I going to cut to? I want to keep that. Kind of the center. We are going to mark this one. Yes. What did I say? 15 and a quarter spacing. So I'm going for a one and a quarter spacing on the dealie. So that gives me for 10 space. 10 saws, that's 10 and 10 quarters, uh, yeah, 5 halves, or 2 and a half, so that's 12 and a half, plus an inch on each end, but I want a minus an inch and a quarter, and okay, now we're, so that's 11 and a quarter, plus 2, it's 13 and a quarter. Thirteen and a quarter. If we kind of center it here, we want six and a half plus an eighth. Marking knife helps your teeth line up good. Just in case you were wondering. Actually, one cross cutting. You want to mark there, and you want to mark there. And that'll prevent the grain from blowing out. Really bad. for keeping 90. Oh, you can even kind of see it in my saw there, is to look for the reflection of the wood in the side of the blade. And you want it to look like it's going, basically like it's a, a piece of glass, like you can see right through it. Um, as long as you're cutting 90 to here, you'll be cutting 90 down. Yeah, I should have cut that one. Should have cut that. Oh well, live and learn. Um, now we're gonna mark this one. Don't be a dummy too. Clean up your bench. I never used a marking knife until I started using one. Another 
it sounds ridiculous, but it's amazing what a difference it makes to just a pencil. And this is just one of those paint hook knives. Sharpened it really good. Nothing expensive. I think I paid a dollar for it. If that. And there, now we're scored all the way around. I'm not going to let the finished piece fall on the floor. cleaner the second time. Uh, these are pretty good. I can tell just by looking at them. Um, a little bit of cleanup to do on there, but for the most part, pretty square. Pretty square is good enough for this project. I don't need to be good nuts, but it sure helps. Half indiscriminately. Like, I should be putting way more effort into this. I just don't have the patience at the moment. We're just going to recommend. I think it's pretty straight. I don't know. Yeah, it didn't go far enough. First, line up on one end there. Turn it over. Do some weird dance to keep it from the straight edge up to her knife. And scribe. Again, this is the good side. So now we're going to confuse it. Two pieces left to fabricate. That's the sides, and then we just gotta join all this crap together. So we'll use this. So I was thinking about making it 24 inches, but it doesn't really need to, so I think I'm just gonna go with boat and halves here. So we're 40, so we'll make it 20. Well, I'm going to lose a bit on each end. Those are the tops. 8 inches. Right there's our center. Again, rough stuff. So, we'll come out to about there. We're gonna go... What? 
two. Close enough. Now for the back side. Now I've mocked it all together, I've cut in the pieces, sides, one, two, three braces. I don't think I need one across the bottom to see if it'll actually do. I'm gonna put strips with curves to hold all the things. So, appears to do it. In fact, I'm thinking I'm going to lop off this whole top half, and I'm just going to use that, and then this piece will become the guide with the kerfs in it. Yeah. Scratch that. No. This on the bottom. This flip sideways with the kerfs cut in it for a top. Just winging it. Yeah, so modifications.
Okay, so I've slapped it back together. This is for another look. How it holds the saws. I have quite a few different types of saws. Slots will need to be made wider. Yeah. But hey, look at that. That well, was definitely holding all the saws. Kind of like a gun rack for your saws. They're not the most orderly, but part of that is because I have ones like this guy, which. I like it, but it'll never fit in. That'll work. It's a little bit beefy. I like it. So I think that's the final design. Well, unfortunately, it's snowing now. So, that means I gotta get this shit done. It's time for assembly. Not recommended, but you know. Sometimes you just don't have any Craig screws, so you just gotta use standard old black screws. They work just not as good. And I think it turned out fairly well. It holds all, I get nice, easy access to my back saws. So yeah, if you're like me and can't say no to an estate sale to an old box of old saws, make your own saw till.